Hey, good afternoon to you. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. We do have a few things to talk about today. Uh, do notice that we do have our storm still in the south, and this will shift over to the southeast in the mid-Atlantic later this afternoon. Plus, we have our big system that's over Wyoming and Colorado that's going to put some heavy snowfall for them as well. Now, we do have this Arctic air still passing through, and I will update you your information on that. Matter of fact, the top video will show you that we have another blast that will be coming in later this month. I will show you the impacts from that as well. Now, the video right above my head shows you all these storms that will be passing through today for the south and the southeast. Also, the next section of storms that will blow up over Texas and Oklahoma and move east for the next coming days. So I will go through what your impacts could be from that as also. So if you've never been here before, hello, my name is Mark. I do upload every single day, just not sundown from Friday to Saturday. That's when I take my Sabbath. So hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit that bell. We are going into the worst part of the tornado season as well as early hurricane season. So make sure you subscribe, you're not gonna to wanna to miss a video. Now remember, I do put the links in the description to save you time, so please use the links. We do have a 40% chance for thunderstorms in this blue area here, right around 3 p.m. Central Time this afternoon, as well as a zero Z, and you see it does blow up a little bit for Southern Texas from Stockton to San Antonio. 40% chance of thunderstorms, as well as just shifting to the east and the mid-Atlantic, and you got a 40% chance of thunderstorms all the way to 7 p.m. now for this area. And then when you get to 10 p.m. and 11 p.m. tonight, this will go off into the Gulf of Mexico, but you still got to 40% for Texas, and now you got it for South Carolina and North Carolina as you get into tonight. We did have two tornadoes that did touch the ground right above Memphis, Tennessee yesterday, uh, right to the east of Munford. So there was two tornadoes yesterday. So it looks like a recycled tornado hit down right here east of Cottonwood. And then it went right back down by Thompson Estates. But there was a little bit of damage uh, on Glen Springs Road, the 2300 to 2600 block. So there was some damage. But look how close that was to a whole bunch of people in the neighborhood. So thank God it missed all that. As well as the second one, it did miss a lot of homes that was nearby. So they might have some minor damage to their homes from the winds possible, but... That was close too. Now for today from National Weather Service, all this blue area here will be mixed precipitation as well as rain in these lighter green areas and thunderstorms in these green areas. But for this yellow right here, you have severe thunderstorms possible for here, also for North Carolina, as well as some heavy rain and flash flooding, very much possible for Louisiana and Southern Mississippi. Now we're taking a look at the Arctic Oscillation, the AO, from many different uh, guidance models that way we can get a better look at what's going on because there is something sneaky going on at the end of May. Now the Euro confirms that there will be this cold air that we're still having right now and it will stick around to at least 11th and maybe the edge of the 12th. I did show that for the Northeast with maybe a little bump on the 14th with, which could be either the Midwest or the Northwest. I will go over that. But if you look around the 18th on, all the way to the low 20s, we're getting a good dip all the way to a negative 2 again. Now, I'm not saying that that's going to be freezing temperatures. I will go through what you have. But we do have another dip coming later in May. And when I look through the GFS, GFS, like I always say, has always been pretty spot on when it comes to uh, Arctic air coming in. It's very good on the AO. It shows us also having our dip that we have now, and it will be going away soon. We'll be having a little warm-up. And then right when we get around the 14th, to the 15th this might be a little something coming but it did show the 19th yesterday when i looked at it and now it's updated and it's showing uh maybe a little stubble across but it's saying it's going to be later it's saying that it's going to be somewhere around the 22nd to 23rd of may and it is going to be some kind of dip coming so that part is trending now this is us today as you see we go through our arctic air and this is a look as far as temperatures from 500 millibars up way high up in the atmosphere but it's looking close on the country so we can see exactly where it's going over and you can see that right around the 11th that it starts scooting over to the michigan area in the northeast and then they'll be done with this cold air by the 12th but as we go through our times and our days go by we get a nice good warm-up things go real nice right when you get around the 17th and 18th a little bit of cold air tries coming in the northeast and I'm thinking that's what those other models are reading as far as being before uh, the 20s like the GFS. And you see this little anomaly of this cold air trying to come in on the 18th. You'll see this thing build up and it'll scoot 
But right when you get to the early 20s, just like GFS said, there is some kind of reach out right around the 20th and the 21st. And then as it moves by, it's going to release a good cold energy spot of cold air that will circulate for a day or so around the Ohio Valley in the northeast before it leaves out again. Plus, there's going to be some very cold air coming to the northwest. And this white is freezing temperatures on our level. So there will be some very cold air for them as well. Now, our temperatures today, without any kind of wind chill, is pretty good temps. But we got 40 straight across the center. We got high 30s in the Midwest. And we got 40s on the West Coast. But the Ohio Valley is in the high 30s to 40s, so is the Northeast. So it wasn't too bad. It was a little chilly. I'm right here in Milwaukee, and I tell you, it, it was chilly outside. However, it will warm right back up today, and everybody would be okay and warm. At least 40s and 50s, right back to the 60s and almost 70s on the West Coast and the South. Get into the 80s and over 100 for lower Texas, so it's really going to warm back up. And tomorrow morning, our country, once again, we're going to be in cold air conditions with this polar air, especially for the Midwest and the intercoastal states of the Northeast. You will get some in the higher elevations in the mountains. You'll be in the 40s again for everybody else and the 60s in the South. Wednesday morning, it's still going to be pushing all the way through, and it's still going to be in the 30s and 40s for Ohio Valley. It's going to be in the 40s for the Northeast, and every, all these temperatures are pretty much the same every morning we can imagine waking up with these temperatures for the next couple of days. By Thursday, it's starting to warm up a little more on the western side while this cold air does move to the northeast and y'all in the higher 30s again. And then on the 22nd, this is at 850 millibar height, a little lower than the 500 millibars. You can see the cold air anomaly coming into Ohio Valley right above Michigan. And it will be here also for the 23rd as well. So it will be scooting in a little bit before it leaves. It won't stay long. But it will drop that energy and it will hover for a while. Now, I will update this, of course, because it is starting to get a little bit too far, even though GFS has been updated to a new version where it has more confidence within a two-week period, which is a great thing. But it is showing so far it's going to be in the 40s. Some of them is in the low 40s, but it's still in the 40s. And that's also for the intercoastal of the northeast as well. While you get in freezing conditions in high 30s for the northwest. So I will update this. It's not going deep south. There's no worry about that. 23rd as well. The next day, it does reach a little bit further. But as far as I can see, is northern Alabama maybe getting into the high 40s. But that's about as southern as it goes. But everybody else will be just in the 40s so far, just from this coming in. And on the second day, the cold air will start moving away from the northwest. And you will be in the 40s now instead of the 30s. So it will get better. It'll just be a quick dip. But for Wyoming, so far I'm showing that Cheyenne will be the heaviest snowfall. It could be up to 9 or 10 or even a foot of snow, a little southern of Cheyenne. But there is a lot of more snowfall, according to the Euro, for Cheyenne than anybody else in Wyoming. In Colorado, according to the Euro, Denver is not going to get too much. Uh, but Fort Collins up in the higher elevations could get over a foot a little west of you, but definitely nine inches. And Colorado Springs will get at least six inches and a chance for a foot in higher elevations. And the GFS is showing that Cheyenne will actually get a foot of snowfall. And once again, it will be the biggest amount in, in Wyoming. And the GFS also shows that it will move over a little more east and actually Denver will get slammed with eight inches of snowfall. So there is a possibility for that. Fort Collins over a foot with a chance for a foot and a half just a little west of you. Now for Wyoming, the NAM 3K shows that Cheyenne will get about seven inches. So that part is about trending anywhere from seven to 12 for sure. Uh, but that right west of Riverton has a chance for getting possible over two feet. I'm sure it's higher elevations, but that's a lot of snowfall. And the NAM 3K shows Denver getting a 0.2 of an inch and the Euro showed 0.1. So only the GFS showed that you would get slammed with 8 inches of snowfall. Uh, I don't know if you want that much snowfall or not. However, it's not trending. Now for today, we do have a 2% tornado threat in lower Texas. We also have a 2% over here in North Carolina as well. And we have this big 2% all the way from eastern Texas across southern Louisiana, all the way by Mobile, Alabama, all the way to the edge of the panhandle of Florida. Now, we do have these storms brewing up in the south for Louisiana, southern Mississippi today, and it is starting to wind down. You can see the lightning in it is starting to get less and less flashes as it goes through. So it is winding down a little bit, even though it was a rough night. The next system we're going to have as this swings to the, to the southeast, 
we got a more severe weather that will be popping up. I will go over that. And we have a 2% chance for tornadoes in this green area for tomorrow as well. That's because this is going to keep on flaring and popping up, especially with daytime heating today. Then we got the next system that's coming after that. And for the south, y'all have storms all day long today. It's about 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and they'll start pushing offshore. And you'll be, good, you'll be done with these storms for at least tonight. Uh, it will move over to Georgia for a little bit this afternoon as it goes across, but it won't be as crazy as the south had it. But if you look, you have the storms going through the south today into this afternoon. You'll have some storms for northern Louisiana later on tonight, all the way to about 10, 11 o'clock. Then 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, some more storms brew up for southern Arkansas. Northern Mississippi, about 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. Then when you get about 6 or 7, it's going to move to northern Alabama. But then you're going to start getting your daytime heating, and it looks like it will switch to Montgomery by 9, 10 o'clock in the morning. That's for tomorrow. But then once 11, 12 o'clock comes, now you're getting a big bluster of storms in Texas, Oklahoma, northern Louisiana, southern Arkansas by 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Then it's going to go across Mississippi, and you can see this band stretching all the way out. It looks like it is going to be some winds that's going to be pushing this storm. So we got to keep our eye on that. But this will go all afternoon tomorrow, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock in the afternoon. It's going across Alabama, Georgia by 10, 11 o'clock at night. And then at midnight, 1 o'clock in the morning, even up to 2 o'clock, the storms could reach South Carolina as well. So I will do an update on that and see exactly how these storms are brewing for tomorrow. But it does look like it goes over South Carolina, southern Georgia, and North Carolina as well. All the way from 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, all the way to the early, early a.m. for Jacksonville, North Carolina, all the way till 9, 10 o'clock in the morning, maybe even a little longer. And this is a total rainfall that this could actually accumulate within the next four days by the 12th. All this dark blue is about a quarter of an inch. The light blue is half an inch to three quarters of an inch. But when you get to the pink, like for Texas, any of this purple is over an inch. The pink is two in inches plus. And when you get to this white, it's almost three inches. And this dark red spot is almost four inches or more especially for southern Texas as well. you got to watch out for these heavy rainfall amounts we're going to have. So the heaviest amounts is in this white. I see Lufkin, Texas. Also Alexandria. You're going to be three, two to three inches for sure. Maybe even plus northern Alexandria. Big hot spot of all white. Two inches plus rainfall. Three inches plus from Winfield all the way to Oakdale. And then all this white here from Mississippi as well. With Hattiesburg getting over 5 inches shows a little hot spot for Hattiesburg. As well as Alabama and the Panhandle of Florida. All this is in uh, 2 plus to mostly 3 plus inches of rainfall within the next 4 days. As well as South Carolina and North Carolina. Looks like it's going to be mostly by Wilmington for an inch. A little over an inch towards the coast. Myrtle Beach, almost two inches. It will go all the way up to Hartsville, Sumter, and Orangeburg. So thank you again for visiting my channel today. Please hit that like button if I've helped you in any way today. And share this on social media if you know somebody that's in these areas of where this heavy rainfall and storms could be. Uh, I, I have it on these storms for Wyoming and Colorado. That way you can see it as it goes by. Time and date is on the left. But as you can see, you do have a lot of storms and some snow that will be coming. Uh, at the same time, I like to praise our God like we do every day. Amen. God bless you all today. Hope you have a very blessed day today. Psalm 143. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications. In thy faithfulness answer me, and in thy righteousness. And enter not into judgment with thy servant. For in thy sight shall no man living be justified. For the enemy hath persecuted my soul. He hath smitten my life down to the ground. He hath made me to dwell in darkness, as those that have been long dead. Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is desolate. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the work of thy hands. I stretch forth my hands unto thee, my soul thirsteth after thee, as a thirsty land, Selah. Hear me speedily, O Lord, my spirit faileth, 
Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee. Deliver me, O Lord, from mine enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake. For thy righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. And of thy mercy, cut off mine enemies, and destroy all them that afflict my soul. For I am thy servant. Amen. God bless you all today. Hope you have a very blessed day today. Thank you again for visiting me. I hope that you have a very, very great day. I mean that. All glory does go to God. God of Jacob. Amen. <laughs> have a blessed day, my friends.